Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Photoshop tutorial. And today we're gonna to take a look at creating a composite image and it goes a little something like this. So I don't know, you tell me. I think it looks pretty cool, uh, but more importantly, whether you think it looks cool or you think it's absolutely ridiculous over the top, I think we're going to cover some really cool tips, techniques, tricks, everything like that, um, and talk about how you can build a composite like this for yourself. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, of course, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I almost forgot what I was going to say there for a second. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss another one of these tutorials in the future. And if you really love the video, you can use the link that appears up there. And if it doesn't appear up there, there's a link in the bio to buy my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. I think you're really going to like it. And it helps us do what we do here on this channel. This channel is funded entirely by viewers just like you. So for that, I thank you. Let's jump in and check out this video. All right, so here we are. I'm going to keep this copy of the sort of the finished product up here on screen. Now, this is just my pre-run of the whole tutorial. Um, I'm going to leave it up here just in case I need to double check adjustment layers or whatever's going on here in the layers panel. But what I have is a few resources, and I think maybe I'll maybe I'll give these resources away. I'll, I'll there'll be a link or something down in the bio of this uh, tutorial where you'll be able to find a link to access these. I might trade you a sign up for my newsletter to get these photos or whatever if you want to follow along. Three raw files of an alley. I I sort of bracketed them out so it's HDR, you know, so you got really one exposed for the highlights, one exposed for the shadows, and then one that kind of runs down the middle. And then this shot of our model uh, right here. So we're, the idea obviously is to create the background, drop the model in, do all of the lighting and color matchup, and, and try to get it, you know, looking somewhat reasonable, okay? So the first thing we want to do is go File, Automate, and choose Merge to HDR Pro. Now what we'll do is choose Browse, and boom, my window will pop up here, and I can just choose those three .dng files, three camera raw files, choose to open them up, and then I'm gonna hit OK right over here, and Photoshop's gonna work its Photoshop magic here. It's gonna take just a moment, and it's gonna run through some stuff, look a little weird, uh, but just let it do its thing. And what we'll get is this Merge to HDR Pro dialog box that appears. Now, if you're using the images and following along, uh, you're going to want to go with local adaptation up here. We're going to work in 16-bit mode. That's fine. You can bump it up to 32-bit, but 16-bit gets the job done here. Now, I created a preset just for this to keep things a little faster. I called it Streets. And you can see here it's a radius of 200 pixels, strength of 0 0.75. Tick on edge smoothness. Uh, you can slow the video down here if I'm speaking too fast, uh, but just to kind of burst through this quickly. Tone and detail. Gamma, we're going to rock out out at about 0 0.75. We're going to set the exposure to 0 0.5 and then the detail level at 30%. Now, I don't touch the advanced sliders in this case. I do, however, mess around with the curve. Now, it's kind of important to note what I'm doing here with the curve. See, if you don't know how curve, curves work, when you, when you click on the curve to add a point and you pull downward, you're darkening your photo. If you click on, a, to click on the line and add a point and pull upward, you're infusing brightness. So what I can tell here, courtesy of this histogram, is that the bulk of the tones in my image fall kind of on the darker side of things, right? It's all these walls, the catwalk, the dumpster, the shadows in the road, the, the bright stuff up here in the sky and the highlights in the windows. There's not very much of that here in the image. You can see this is the brighter stuff. So even we have this strip of gradation going like darker stuff over down here and the brighter stuff over here. There's just not that much bright stuff. So I wanted to increase the contrast of the of the photo, but I didn't want to get rid of or lose the detail in the highlights. So what I did was I pulled down on the highlights up here. You can see that's this anchor point I set right here. And then over here where I knew the, the bulk of my tones were, I pulled down on the darkest of those tones and I pulled up on the brighter bits of those tones to just infuse some sort of like contrast into the darker parts of the photo, which in this case happened to be the bulk of the image. So as I know we get a, got a little theoretical there, um, but that's what's happening. And in fact, we're going to add another curves adjustment layer that'll do something very similar to this and we'll go over it again, but maybe in a less wordy kind of way. Let's go ahead and click OK and Photoshop's gonna process this HDR file. And you can see here we have our image. Now, something important to note about the photo is under image mode, we are working with a 16-bit photo. If you worked in 32-bit mode, you probably want to convert it to 16-bit at this point. Um, you could, under, with 32-bit, go in and work with curves or levels and really suck a lot of detail out of the shadows and the bring back highlights and all kinds of amazing stuff that you can do in 32-bit where it's really the best of the best of the best to do it there. But we're going to be working in 16-bit mode here. Um, so if you, if you want to get out of 32-bit mode because you can't do a lot 
lot of stuff in Photoshop in 32 bits. Jump back to 16 bits where we're still working with an insanely deep image with a ton of detail, uh, but we can work with uh, much, many more of the features here in Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is we actually want to split this image in half and flip the background. Now the cool thing about this shot is we have two very different buildings. It's part of the reason why I thought this alleyway was interesting. We can go with a very modern looking background if we save this bizarre metal plated stuff or we can make it look much more just like a, you know, old city type a uh, bunch of apartment, not really high rises, but taller apartment buildings. And we can flip this to the other side of the, the alleyway here. And we get these cool dumpsters lining both sides of the alleyway and everything. I think, however, I'm going to stick with the, the, the more modern look. Now, in order to make sure that everything lines up perfectly, we first need to make sure our background is perfectly straight. Now, I could go like filter, adaptive wide angle, and pull all kinds of straight lines. But the way that I've been doing this for years before adaptive wide angle was ever a thing in Photoshop, that's the way I'm going to show you how to do it. It's kind of the old school way we want to do a couple things here go view make sure snapping is shut off it's just it makes this a little bit easier turn your rulers on now what I want to do is I basically want to make sure that the lines in this building here at the back end of my alleyway are all straight up and down and straight side to side so I'm gonna pull by clicking on my rulers I'm gonna pull a guide out and I can see here the, the ruler lines up perfectly with the roof line, but over here it's not quite perfect. All right, so we'll, we'll have to correct that. That's fine. Then I'm going to move all the way down, closer kind of to the bottom of the building, and I'll pull out, look for another straight line, maybe across these windows, something like that, and I can see here pretty close to the top of the windows, pretty close to the top of the windows, not too bad in terms of straightness when we get closer to the bottom of the image. Okay, that's great. Let's now find two vertical lines here on the back part of the image, and we would pull our ruler over here, the vertical rulers, we would pull that out to get a guide, and I'm going to zoom in here, and I can see I lined up with that window great, but when I get down here, we've got quite a gap. Now, I lined my guide up with the top window, so I'm going to make sure I line my guide up with the top window over here as well, so I'm going to pull another guide out. I'm going to line it up as close to perfect as I can get it. We're lined up on the edge of that window. And sure enough, even by the time we get down to this window, I can tell there's a gap there. So we need to do some correcting. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have our straight guides. We have our lines. We can shut our rulers off. We want view rulers, shut them off, get them out of the way. We need to unlock our background. We do that by double clicking on it. We can name it whatever we like. Layer zero works for me in this case. And then we want to free transform this uh this photo and it may sound stupid but it actually works pretty well so we go edit free transform and then we right click and just choose to distort it distorting is going to allow me to grab any of the corners and pull them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull this bottom corner to the right so what i'm what i'm first going to do is try to pull these bottom windows over to the right a little bit so if i pull this straight over i'm just watching those windows and they look right Oof, pull it a little further. There we go. Right about there. They look like they're all about the same distance, right, from the uh, from the edge of the ruler. Maybe they need to be pulled over just a touch more. And if pulling over doesn't quite work, we can always push back the opposite direction up here. But I think actually, I think they look pretty, it's pretty close to being perfect. We could nudge that over a just, I mean, the tiniest of bits. And this is why shutting snapping off is so important because if you don't shut off the snapping, it, it's going to be impossible to move it, just these tiny little pixel increments. All right, that's pretty good. And then over here, you can see the image moved away from our guides quite a bit. Um, so what I need to do is pull this top part out just a little, a little tiny, tiny bit. And we can just double check. That looks pretty straight. With both of our guides, it looks pretty decently straight. Maybe it could be nudged a little bit, but I think it's good for now. And now we'll look at our top guide. It actually looks like it's straightened that out quite a bit. Maybe this top could be pulled downward, just a very, very smallest smallest amount. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks like that lines us up pretty good. Our verticals still look pretty good. And the bottom line also now looks straight across those windows. So that's pretty good. When we've gotten that, you can see it, it doesn't even really look like we've made any changes, but we've made just the smallest, subtlest changes. We can commit that change. And then what you'll probably have to do, you can see how there's like a little bit of pixels, you know, some pixels that are missing there. What I typically would do is just go File, Free Transform, and just hold down my Shift and Alt keys. This would be Shift and Option on the Mac. And just bump the image. Make it a little bit bigger just so all that stuff is uh, covered up and, and is there and looks good. And then, you know, commit the change. We can go View, uh, Show, and make sure we shut off our guides. So now we have an image that when we cut it down the middle, we can flip it and it's going to line up perfectly. So let's do that. Let's grab a rectangular marquee tool. We're going to drag a selection over the right part of the image. And what I'm the where I'm looking to end my selection, if you will, is kind of 
I, I want to save these windows here. So the seam between the, uh, the, the two halves is going to happen between these windows and these windows. So I want as much brick to play with in between. So I made sure my selection landed much closer to these windows over here than these windows. So if I need to go in with a mask and erase something a little bit, I can do that. So I'm going to zoom back out. And all we need to do is use the hotkey command or control J. You see it pops that half of the image up onto its own layer. Then once more, we go edit, free transform. And what I want to do here is I want to set my anchor point to the center left-hand side. So it's going to move my anchor to right there. So when I right-click on this and say, look, flip it horizontal, it's going to flip it right around like that. I can commit the change, and you can see what we've got. The building, everything looks like it lines up, I mean, darn near perfectly. We can go in and tweak and adjust some things if we have to. Now you can see we are missing some pixels over there. That's no problem. What we would do, hold down the Shift key, grab both layers, and we would go File. Oh, I'm sorry, not file. We would go edit, free transform. We're free transforming both layers at the same time. And just make the whole kit and caboodle a little bit bigger. And maybe nudge it over a little bit toward the left. And then commit the change. And we have the base of our new background, which is perfectly, uh, you know, a perfectly symmetrical image. In fact, it's too perfect because we have some stuff like this sign, right? The sign back here that's very obviously just a flipped version of that sign. So you probably want to go in and maybe use the clone stamp tool, you know, get rid of this sign that's flipped over. Maybe get rid of the little security camera, get rid of the lettering, some things like that. Uh, just to make the, uh, kind of throw the balance off on the photo and add just a little bit of realism. Now, I'm not going to do that in this case, not because I'm being lazy. Well, maybe a little bit because I'm being lazy, but not really because I'm being lazy. If I go back to sort of the finished example, you can see when we bring the model in, she's going to be kind of covering up that entire half. So I'm not really, I'm not too concerned about that because I know that our model is going to cover all of that stuff on that part of the image. So I'm not going to waste my time with it. Uh, but just know, you would basically create a new layer here. You would grab your clone stamp tool and make sure that you're sampling from current and below and you know alter option click you know on the bricks or whatever and say like we're going to get rid of this you know this one light right here or whatever you know I'm just giving you an example but I'm going to delete that because I have no interest in that so let's come in here we'll just name these layers real quick I'm just going to name this one BG and I'll name this one BG hyphen left or something whatever just so I can identify them quickly and I want to add uh, a little bit more contrast to kind of the general bulk of the image again while preserving uh, my highlights so we're going to do this by using a curves adjustment layer right up here curves adjustment layer and once more we have our histogram here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, histogram, make the darker pixels in the bulk of the image a little bit darker, and come over here and make the brighter pixels a little bit brighter. And oh, by the way, I really don't want to blow out the highlights, see how the line is pulled up a little be beyond where the default positioning of the line was. So we'll add another point up there and just pull the highlights back into place. And now real quick, if I, if I just show you a little before and after, you can see there's before and there's after. It literally just looks like we affected this, this whole part of the photo and just watch the sky. Almost nothing Nothing changes up in the sky, even though we applied very much a global adjustment to this image. So that's a really, really cool way, and and just one of the amazing things about working with curves. You have very selective, uh, very selective power when you're working with the curves adjustment layer. And now the next thing I want to do is begin adding some light to this uh, photo. So we want to sort of add, turn the street lights on, turn these lights on the side on. So what we want to do is jump over to any web browser. I'm going to have this link down in the description of this video. Free. Photoshop brush pack over at uh, my good friends that work at brusheasy.com. Lots of free Photoshop brushes here. Uh, you can grab, and just search the site for lens flares. Grab any pack you want. Um, I have different packs on my computer, but any of them will work. Just have fun with them, play around with them. And we're going to go ahead and create these lights. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. And I'm going to name this light uh, hyphen one or something because we're going to do a few of these. So I'm going to make sure I grab my brush tool here. I also want to make sure my foreground and background color is set to the default by hitting the letter D and then hit the letter X to flip your foreground and background colors. So white at the end of this whole thing should be our foreground color. I'm going to right click. You want to load those brushes into Photoshop and you'll do that after you right click with the brush. You click on this little cog wheel and you just choose to load those brushes in wherever you save the brush back. If you saved it on your desktop, just go select it and it'll load it into Photoshop. Great. And you'll get your flares in Photoshop. Photoshop. So I'm going to grab just any old flare, one that has a lot of oomph to it. So kind of like this guy right here in the middle. I'll grab that. I'm going to resize it down to like 400 pixels, something that's kind of manageable. Uh, and then I'm going to zoom in. Whoops. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to zoom in here on these lights. There we go. And I'm going to I'm going to just tap with the brush maybe once, maybe twice, maybe get it a little closer than that. There we go. And we're essentially, you know, turning those lights on. That's great. 
and it looks good. Now I'm going to right click again and you can use any flare you want. I kind of found these floodlight flares that I thought were cool. So you can see it's almost like a beam of light. So I, to find something like this, maybe search for like light beams uh, or something like that on Brush Easy. So either of them work. So I'm going to just grab this one and whoops, let me undo that. And I'm going to paint the light beam that would sort of, you know, be coming down out of the first street light. And then maybe what I'll do, I'll open up my brush uh, panel right up here by just clicking on that. Here's my brush panel appearing semi off screen. And I'm going to choose brush tip shape. And what I'm going to do is just click on this little arrow right here. And I'm just going to tilt the beam a little bit just so we don't have two of the exact same beam uh, appearing right on top of one another. So something like that works. Eh, maybe I need to move it over a little bit to the left. There we go. Something like that. Just so they're a little bit different. You know, no, no light beam looks the same, does it? Or maybe it does, but we never really perceive it. I, I don't know, whatever I'm talking about. But it, I just want it to look a little different. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, at this point, we could go and just blur the edges a little bit. See how it's kind of not 100% not perfect um, or just it, it still kind of looks pretty fake. So we'll go filter and we'll choose blur. And I'm going to roll with motion blur here. I'm going to go with an up and down, you know, 90 degree angle. So straight up and down motion blur. Let's try like 125 pixels. See what that looks like. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Maybe let's take it to like 90. I just want to make sure I really start to blast away the hard edges, but I still want to maintain almost the rigidity of some of those actual light beams. Uh, I think an uh, angle of 90 with a distance of 90 is beautiful. So we're going to take that and now I'm going to duplicate this layer. Command or control J. Boom. Light one copy. I'm going to shut light one copy off. I'm going to come down to light one and we we want to apply a hue saturation adjustment to this layer by hitting command or control U, which is going to bring up hue saturation. We want to tick on colorize. So turn on colorize. We're going to set the brightness here to add a somewhere around negative 20. That's great. We're going to jack a saturation all the way up to 100%. And then we're going to turn the hue up to, I don't know, 25 to 30. Maybe I'll just manually punch in 30. That looks pretty good. Something like that. And I'm going to hit OK. Now to really make this lighting effect pop and, and stick out, we're going to set this to a blend mode of screen. And you can see it doesn't look all that great. Well, let's turn the white light back on, select the white layer, and we're going to set this layer to overlay. And you can see now we have this light effect. You can go and start reducing opacity if you want. I'm going to leave my opacity set to 100 for both of these because of how we're building this file, uh, but you can really do what you want. Now I'm going to go ahead and use that same exact technique, and I am going to add light to these side lamps here in this alleyway, uh, but I'm going to speed the video up for that so we don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing. All right, great. So we've got our lights in place. Things are starting to come together. Uh, at this point, I would go and I would just do some general healing or cloning or whatever needed to be done to kind of clean the scene up a little bit. This can really help in terms of the final uh, output of your composites. Now, what I'll do here in the foreground is I'll just try to maybe, I don't know, just see what it looks like if I try to blend some of this cobblestone together. It's not really too, too noticeable, so that's actually not bad. Um, it's just going to help break up the overall uniformity of the image. Um, and make it a little bit harder to tell like hey that was just copied we don't need to worry about much way back here because the girl she's going to be covering all of that up so I'm not too too terribly concerned with that there we go all right let me back this up I can check it out that's pretty good I'm like you know at this point this is really by the way cleaning up these blemishes this is really where you take an image to the next level so I would definitely highly recommend you spend a lot of time just really cleaning up your photos make them look exactly you know how you want them to be if you want things to look hyper realistic well clear out tons of blemishes make everything look beautiful and perfect and you would be surprised it seems like such a mundane and kind of like dumb work type of step but it makes a huge difference in the final finished product so I just got rid of a couple little like like wayward spots that that were appearing so once you go in and you kind of clean up some blemishes what we're going to do next is well I'm going to grab my move tool so I don't have to worry about accidentally sampling or healing anything we're going to create a gradient map or not a gradient map layer excuse me just a gradient fill layer so we can go layer new fill layer gradient and I'm going to name this lighting and what we'll do, you can see right now I have it set to a, a foreground, a transparent gradient. I don't want that. I want a black to white gradient, just like that. Now, what I want with my gradient is I actually want the black up here at the top and the white at the bottom. So I'm going to tick this little reverse option on, flips my gradient over. Great. Hit OK. And we're going to set this to the blend mode of soft light. Now, this does something pretty cool. It almost begins to make the scene look video game-esque, right? Where you have a lot of light in the immediate foreground. And it almost gets darker as it gets closer to the sky. It's kind of an unnatural look. But it's pretty cool. And if we want to 
tone it back a little bit. Maybe we'll take it back to like 75% opacity. We can just drag that back and you still get like a nice effect. But we're beginning to transform the whole scene to look exactly how we want it to look. Now, the more I look at this, I'm thinking maybe we should add a giant light here above this building because the model, when we bring her into play, she has this edge light happening around her. So we should probably create this light that's kind of coming in over her shoulder there, right? So it would be the light that hits the, the back of her body and it's almost wraps around her shoulder. So let's do that real quick. Create a new layer and we'll call this sky light or something. And I'll just grab the brush tool. We can right click. And what we'll do is we'll just grab a giant soft edged brush, something like that. But we need to make it bigger. Let's right click. Let's set this to like 2000 pixels, something big. And we want the hardness to be zero. You see that right there? Zero percent hardness. And we'll just click once. Yeah, kind of right there in the middle. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll bump it down just a tiny bit. One white. There we go. And then command or control J to duplicate that. Shut the top layer off, select the bottom layer. Now, to, to bring up hue saturation, we can bring it up, but with the same exact settings we last used by adding Alt or Option to the hotkey. So this would be Command, Option, or Control, Alt, and the letter U. And it's going to bring up hue saturation, but with that colorize checked on and everything we used before, I can hit OK. See how fast that was? Set this to the blend mode of screen. Turn on the white layer and set this to something like overlay. And then I probably want to reduce the opacity of both of these a little bit. Kind of something like that. We want it to be noticeable, but not like totally crazy overbearing. So something like that. And I think the next thing we'll do is come up here and add a gradient map. So we're going to begin kind of applying some color toning to this. This looks crazy because it's just this black to white or really white to black gradient. I'm going to double click on or just single click, I'm sorry, on that gradient stripe. And we're going to change this gradient. So I'm going to double click here on the white color stop to bring up the color picker. And I'm going to punch in uh, the, the color 03050B. So we're going to begin mapping. This will be the color that we map to the shadows of the image. So we want it to be very dark, a very, very dark, but pretty saturated blue. The whole image looks dark. Don't worry. That's because we still have a black map to the highlights. Double click over here. And for the highlights, we're going to map the color uh, FEF5C1. So it's a very light, very beige type color. We're going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK over here in my gradient editor window. I'm going to collapse my properties panel. And I think we're just going to set this gradient map to something like soft light to help transfer some of the color and uh, contrast uh, but still maintaining many or most of the original properties of our background photo looks great. So that's that. And just for reference here, if we alter option, click on the eyeball for our original background, there's what we brought in, right? That was the sort of the HDR fresh meat image. And now we've done all of this to it. So we're almost transforming it into a CGI-like uh, photo to the point where some people would argue, this isn't even photography anymore. It's just digital art. To which I say, yeah, you're probably right. But, you know, maybe it still looks cool. All right, so what we want to do at this point is merge all of our layers to a new layer. Uh, the hotkey for this is Command, Shift, Option, or Control, Shift, Alt, and the letter E. Merges all visible layers up to a new layer. Now what I want to do is set this layer to the blend mode of multiply. It's going to significantly darken everything. And this gradient map that we just spent all that time creating, well, I'm going to hide it because I only really wanted it turned on for the, the merged image. And now that we've merged this and brought it up, we have a, a bit of the, the tone and the, the brightness factor of the final photo uh, in place. And that gradient map was just adding a little bit too much contrast. I'm actually going to name this layer uh, multiply just so I know what's going on with it. And what we want to do is it's a little overbearing, right? Like we're, we're not quite losing detail, but to the human eye, it almost looks like we're losing some detail up in these massive dark areas of the photo. So we're going to reduce the contrast of this multiply layer. We're going to do that with a curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to just click here, add a curves adjustment layer, and I'm going to clip it to my multiply layer. So this curves adjustment layer will only be affecting the multiply layer beneath it. We're going to do that by using the, com uh, the hotkey command option or control alt and the letter G. You see now I have that little arrow pointing down saying this curves layer only attacking the one single multiply layer beneath it. All right, now over here I can tell based on my histogram we have this giant expanse of black stuff. So I'm going to just click on the black point and drag it upward. And that's going to brighten that up. It's going to reduce contrast. Uh, and it does kind of, you know, exactly what I want. So I can just kind of play around with this, see how things are looking. And you can see there's before the curves adjustment layer, there's after. And if I shut off both layers, there's before, there is after. So we're still changing a lot of the tone and the color and the overall look of the photo just as we wish. And now I think we're ready to go ahead and merge once more, merge all of this up to a new layer, Command, Shift, Option, or Control, Shift, Alt, and the letter E. And then we want to convert this to black and white. And there's a hotkey for that, Control, Shift, or Command, Shift, and the letter U. Flips it right into black and white. And we're going to come up here to Filter, Other, High Pass. And we'll apply probably yeah, three, maybe five pixels of high pass to this. 
I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on here. And I'm going to set this to like soft light. And we'll just check out the kind of mid-tone punchiness before and after. Maybe I'll just reduce the opacity of this a little bit. Just helps kind of define a lot of the edges a little bit more. But we're going to we're gonna bevel all of that off or sand all of that off in this next step. Because we're going to once more merge all of this to a new layer. Command Shift Option E. Again on the PC, that's Control Shift Alt in the letter E. And we're going to name this layer DOF, a.k.a. Depth of Field. We're going to right-click and choose to convert this to a smart object. And now we're going to apply some blur here to the entire background image. So we're going to come up here to Filter. We're going to choose Blur and under Blur. I'm sorry, Blur Gallery. And we're going to choose Field Blur. And what I want to do is probably the point other than the sky that is furthest away from the camera uh, is the top of this building here. So I'm going to point or drop a point right there at the top of the building. And then I'm going to change the blur here from 15 pixels to maybe like 12. 15 is a little excessive. And then what we'll do is we'll drop a point like right here and we'll make this one probably like 8. We'll drop another one right here and we'll make this we'll make this 8 as well. We'll drop another one up here. We're, we're almost trying to like fake depth of field digitally, if you will. Uh, so the more you know about perspective, the better you'll be at this. I'm not, I'm not like the, the biggest expert when it comes to perspective. So I'm just kind of, you know, winging it here. I'm going to go like five pixels there. And then here, much closer to the foreground, I'm going to do like four. Uh, so I know right over here on the brick wall, I'll add another point. I'll set this to like four. And then I'll add another point up here at about five pixels. And then I'm going to come up here to the top and choose OK. And by the way, if you don't like any point, you can just click on it and adjust the, the blur. Like maybe we say, you know what, that probably might be better with 10 or something. You can just go ahead and hit OK. And it'll process our blur. And we can see here, there's before we add the blur, there's after we add the blur. It's looking a little bit more like a proper background should. So I'm going to save the file, and we're going to go work on the model image to bring her into this image and finish off this composite workflow. All right, so I'm going to hit Command-O or Control-O to open a file. There she is, model.dng. I'm going to choose to open. And if you want to pause the video at this point, if you've downloaded the image, just make sure you have settings that look similar to mine. Something like that is great. Uh, you can also, over here, just throw some sharpening onto her. That's great. We're going to end up sharpening the overall image uh, by the time it's all said and done as well. Uh, and then you can just choose to go ahead and open that. Uh, I'm, well, I'm opening a smart object. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to open a smart object, but I believe if you hold down the Shift key when you hit the Open Image, it'll switch to Open object, which converts your image to, as you see here, a smart object. Uh, we know that because that little icon in the bottom right corner of our layer thumbnail. All right, so now that we have her in here, uh, we can do a few things. Number one, we'll go over her skin and just heal up any blemishes. Maybe she said, look, I've got, you know, sunspots or birthmarks on my arm, beauty marks and just different freckles. I want to clean all of that out. We want to have, um, whoops, <laughs> I'm zooming in and out here. Um, I, I want to clean all that stuff up. I've got this kind of scar on my arm. Let's clean all that up. So how would I do that? Well, just like we did with the background, create a new layer. We name this layer blemishes. And I will grab my healing brush tool right here. And I'll make sure that I'm sampling current and below. Diffusion of seven still works great here. And then just hold down the alt or option key. Choose your sample points and just go in and begin just kind of touching this stuff up. I'm going to use my bracket keys to make my brush a little smaller. And then I'll just go and dab up everything that needs to be cleaned up. And I'll speed through the video here. And uh, we'll be back, well, just here when I finish cleaning up all of these different blemishes. All right, great. So we've cleaned everything up. And I think one of the things I want to do is I want to knock out this hair that's dangling on this side of her face, uh, maybe from b beneath the eyelashes down to her shoulder. Um, now, we would probably want to make sure that we get any like bits of stray hair that are hanging over the clothing because that would look a little odd if you have no hair, but there's just kind of dangling hair above clothing. Uh, this, you know, we're, we're almost pixel peeping at this point, though. I don't think anybody would notice. Uh, but you know what? If you're working on the big commercial jobs, maybe people are looking. So Try to cover your bases. All right, let's grab the pen tool here, and I'm going to set this to draw a path. If you're not sure how to use the pen tool or you're not comfortable with it, just practice with it. Maybe I've got some tutorials on the channel about it, um, but we're going to create a just a very smooth selection here around her chin, something like that, and we're going to come up here around sort of the base of her jaw. You can try to you know make this as perfect or you know speed through it as much as you like. I'm going to try to go through it and just kind of, whoops, I'm going to just clean it up as best I can. Something like that. It doesn't have to be like an incredibly perfect edge, but, you know, it also doesn't hurt. Now, once we get out here, we can kind of just loop around whatever we want. I can just bring my path back down along here. And as long as it comes in pretty close to the clothing, nobody's really going to notice. Just get in close to the skin. 
And then I'm going to hold down my alter option key and just join that off so I don't have that crazy loop de loop at the end of it. And now I will just convert this to a selection by using the hotkey command return. That's control enter on the PC. We convert the path to a selection. We're going to create another new layer. And I'm just going to call this like hair cover or something. We actually probably, we probably don't need to be working on separate layers, but it's just a force of habit at this point. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to grab my healing brush once more, but this time I'm going to change the mode from normal to this guy right here, replace. And I'm going to right click. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger, maybe around 70 pixels. That's pretty good. I'm going to zoom out, hold down my alter option key, just sample out here to get some color of the background and just go ahead and paint over that hair. There we go. I just paint right over this, get down the, the, the selection is just going to obviously keep us from making sure we bump into the shoulder or hair or anything kind of crazy. And we don't need to worry about it being super duper perfect because all we need is like a nice edge along here that we can cut out. So you can see it's still not perfect. It almost looks like she has a little goatee. So that's, let's just undo once to bring the selection back, grab our, uh, grab our healing brush and just make sure we go over that edge really thoroughly and just make sure everything's cleaned up nicely for her and just deselect command or control D and I'll just zoom out and that looks a bit better. Now you can see there's still like some cloudiness out there in this, you know, normally you want to clean that up in this case it doesn't matter because we're cutting the background away. Now I should also mention that this is a slightly difficult cut to do because the background color is relatively close to her skin color. This would have been a perfect, uh, a perfect time or opportunity to use a darker background if we had known we were going to drop it over a darker colored background like this. Uh, but, you know, this was shot, whatever, five years ago or something. So uh, I wasn't really thinking that I was going to use it over this background. So we're working with what we got. All right, let's just merge all of our layers together. Right? Select the top layer, hold down shift, select the bottom layer. Whoop, I double clicked accidentally. Select the bottom layer, hit command or control E. It merges all that together and, and renders our smart object, a non-smart object, which is totally fine. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. We're going to grab the quick select tool here and we're gonna drag a selection over her body. So we're gonna do the best we can here and uh, just drag, 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 drag. Let's let the selection take place. And I have it over here. I have it set to add to the selection. So I'm gonna pull down over her arm, great. You can see it adds this whole chunk of background underneath her arm there. Don't worry, we're going to get to that stuff in a minute. I'm going to go over her arm over here. Now, this is where things get a little tough because this highlight along the edge of her arm is very close to the color of the background. So if I come out into that highlight, well, okay, it's, it's picking up most of it. But I can see it's not quite 100% perfect. Uh, but I just need to be cognizant because it may jump from highlight and say, oh, you want the whole colored background. But I, it just kind of proved me wrong. But we still have more to pick up. We'll get back to that. Let's uh, come over here. Whoops. Let's come over here and just select more of her hair. Make sure we get all around the edges of her head. Something like that. Get down here along the edge of her face. Cool. You can see here if we zoom in, I have to grab her chin here. It's important that you don't leave the chin behind. It'll probably be noticed. And then here, like around her eyelash, we got to clean that up a little bit, right? And this stuff. Now, we're going to do some of this in select and mask. So I'm not like... I'm not terribly concerned, uh, but you know, select a mask can be wonky uh, at time. Well, not even at times. Most of the time, quite frankly, it can be wonky. All right, let's grab. Uh, see, there we go. There we go. Just did what I thought it would do. Where now it's grabbing this whole edge of the paper. So if that happens, Command or Control Z to undo that. Let's zoom back in. And I think what I'll do here is just to get kind of a rough selection. I'm just going to use the lasso tool. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool to be specific. Hold down Shift and just choose to add these bits here to the uh, to the selection. And we'll just get a nice clean selection here. Hold down the command or control key and we'll just add that to your uh, selection. You can see here we got all along the shoulder. So I'll probably have sped the video up here and maybe you're watching it sped up a little bit as I talk here. And uh, we're just going to get around the rest of her body using the polygonal lasso tool. Now this is before we go and use uh, the select and mask to really clean things up. So don't stress too much if your selection is not looking perfect. We're going to clean things up in no time flat. All right, great. So I think we got that pretty well taken care of. We can double check on the edge of the face here if need be, but I think that's, you know, it's okay. Maybe we can clean it up a little bit. You know, I'm just holding down shift to add to the selection and mowing right along the edge of the face. Yeah, you know, we are leaving behind a little bit of cheek, cheekness there. There we go. I'll zoom out. Something like that's good. Um, I'm nitpicking now. I'm nitpicking. There we go. Something like that. And we'll uh, bring this into select the mask in just a moment. But before we do that, we have to use quick selection once more. And we have to knock holes here underneath her arm. We got to get rid of the background there. So hold down the alter option key and just paint. And it'll usually do a pretty reasonable job of picking that up here between her legs. That's already opened up. 
and then let's come over here underneath her arm on this side. And in this case, this actually looks like this is another job for the lasso tool, so I'm gonna undo that. Let's grab the lasso tool. And in this case, I think I'm gonna try using the free form, just regular lasso tool. Hold down alter option and just go ahead and cut away, you know, cut away what needs to be cut away. Something like that. And then just let that be and do another pass. You're being a perfectionist at this point. Oh, you know what? We missed part of her shoulder. So this is all this is all part of just the way this stuff works, guys. Just a labor of love sometimes. All right, there we go. So now I think things are set. We are ready to go ahead and hit this little magical button here called Select and Mask, and it's going to enter us into the Select and Mask workspace uh, where we get this whole fun bunch of tools. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We can see the edges of her hair look positively atrocious, uh, but we haven't really done much to fix them. A couple things I want to do right off the bat. I want to tick on Smart Radius and set the radius to, like, I don't know, two pixels, and then I'm going to shift the edge of my selection backwards. So if I just zoom in on this real quick, I'm just going to watch here on the, kind of these straight runs, right? I'm going to shift the edge backwards. So I'm going to go like, I don't know, negative, negative 37, right? And the edge starts to look a little crunchy. So I want to just boost the smoothness of the edge. Now this is doing this to every edge across this whole selection. So I want to go ahead and just boost the smoothness here. And if we take it up to, I don't know, between 7 and 10, that's probably going to do the trick. That actually might be too much. Let's take it down to like 4. I just, I want to make sure we also don't have haloing when we when we bring the selection over to the other image. Because there's going to be some tweaking and adjusting that needs to be done kind of no matter what. Uh, now down here, I'm going to choose to output this selection, not as a selection, but as a new layer with a layer mask. That uh, That's really important that we output with a layer mask because we can tweak and adjust the layer mask to really clean up the edges of the selection where it needs to be cleaned up. Like right there, we can see we're going to have to kind of clean something up there on the side of her arm. Now let's take a look at the elephant in the room, which is the atrocity that is the edges of her hair. Well, we're going to use this little tool right here called the Refine Edge Brush. And uh, well, we can just take this brush and if you need to make it bigger or smaller, you can hit the little drop down menu here make it a little bigger, smaller. I'm going to go with a hardness of 0%, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint over the edges of her hair, and Select and Mask, allegedly, is going to do a great job of selecting and cleaning up those edges. I can tell it just did a really bad thing, though. So what I need to do is right-click here and make the size of this brush a little smaller, so we really only target the edge, and I'm really hanging out mainly out away from the hair, uh, out over the background, and not even just over the hair. So I'm going to just commit that, and that's a bit better. It's still not perfect, uh, but you know what? We've spent enough time nitpicking here in this tutorial now, haven't we? Now I'm just going to come up here across her head. That's my, that's my condescending voice. And we're going to let that go. And I can see there's there's a lot of halo-y junk that's going on up there, so that's not cool. And then we'll bring this down along her forehead. Make sure we get the edge of the eyebrow. Eyebrows are an integral part of the face. And you can see, oof, that's scary. Uh, let's brush over her eyelashes here to bring those puppies back. And we may have to clean that up with the layer mask, but eh, not too bad. What I think we're going to have to clean up with the layer mask is this, this junk up here because that's just not coming through quite perfectly. And I think everything else is pretty good. We'll just back this out. We've made our selection, and I think we'll live with, live or die with what we get up there in the hair. I think it's going to work out. Let's hit OK. Our saving grace might be the fact that she has dark hair, and we are, in fact, dropping her over a dark background. So you can see it has, in fact, outputted a new layer with layer mask. Great. What we can do is grab our move tool up here and just click and drag her drag her, there we go, and hold her on top of the uh, the tab that we're working in, so that's the image we're working in, and then drag the move tool out to the middle, let go of your mouse, and it's going to bring her over. Now, here's something kind of important that I that I probably should have mentioned when we imported her into Photoshop in the first place. You might want to work with a 16-bit image. Um, you can see this says layer mask slash 8. That means we were only working with an 8-bit image. There's just a lot less information there, and it's going to give you a lower quality finished result. I'll show you how to open a 16-bit image just a, in just a second, uh, but here it's just saying, look, the target document's a different depth because the background is 16 bits and the image we're dragging in is 8. Just say, yeah, drop it in. It's it's, it's going to be what it is. And then we're going to position her. So I'll move her like over to here. I think something like that actually works out pretty well. Um, that's, you know, her positioning looks good in the photo. The light's coming in over her shoulder. Maybe drag it over a little bit this way, but I also don't want to be too distracting with like some crazy light coming out underneath her arm there. Something like that's probably perfect. And if you want to resize the photo, you can, you know, we can kind of fudge it a little bit. You can go edit free transform, hold down the shift key. We can maybe make her a little bit larger, nudge her over. I'm just holding down shift and using my arrow keys. I'll nudge her kind of into place like that. Hit the little check icon up here to commit the change. Now, real quick, I will close her. We don't need to save that. Don't save. Don't worry. I'm going to command or control O to open again. I'm going to double click to open her in camera raw and down here, we have what are called, I believe they're called the workflow options. Yeah, workflow options. We probably want to choose the depth to be 16 bits. Uh, that will allow us to really take advantage of the full capabilities of RAW. But 
we're not going to go through and reselect her because that took enough time and effort. All right, now that we have her in here, a couple things I'm going to do. I'm going to actually zoom out just to click. I'm going to look at the mask over here. There's a big white bar. I'm going to Alt or Option click the mask to bring that up, and I'm just going to get rid of any white stuff that's not her bodily outline. So I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to drag a selection across the top, hold down Shift, and drag another selection over here, and then black is my foreground color. Uh, we want to make sure black is your foreground color. We'll just go Edit. We'll go Edit Fill. If I can select it, let's go edit fill. There we go. And I'm going to choose to just use my foreground color. Hit OK. And then we can go select deselect just to get rid of the selection. Alter option, click on the mask to get out of its alpha channel. Now, uh, what we want to do is just take a closer look at some of the edges. Um, I'm not going to be too picky here. We're just going to clean up obvious stuff like the background peering through between her fingers. Um, down here between her legs, there's maybe a little haloing. Same thing with over here on this edge. And the, the monster is just going to be cleaning up some of the stuff on the side of her arm. Uh, but also... Up here, the hair just needs to be touched up a little bit. It's not awful, but it really could be cleaned up quite a bit and just look a lot, lot better. So we'll do that by grabbing the brush tool. And uh, the trick here is you just want a large soft edge brush, right? Click 2,000 pixels, maybe a little excessive. In fact, 300, a little excessive. Around 100, I got 114. Hardness set to zero is totally fine. The most important thing is we change the blend mode of the brush, not of the layer, of the brush. We change the blend mode to soft light. And now what this is going to do is it's going to just intensify matching color Sort of. Uh, basically, if you're painting with black, when you're painting over black areas, it's going to make the black areas a little bit blacker, but not really affect the white areas. See how I'm, I'm technically painting over white, but nothing's there because I have to set the, the blend mode of soft light. So it's just going to really help get rid of some of that haloing. Now, the problem is Select the Mask just did an absolutely abysmal job of being able to pick up those hairs and stuff along the back of her head. Uh, but if you've used Select the Mask before, you're probably, you're probably sadly used to that. So I'm just going to move over here and we'll just paint away and try to just clean things up a little bit and just we'll close our eyes and, and you know, sing some nursery rhymes together and try to pretend like everything's okay, even though it really does not look very good. Uh, but this is the, this is the select a mask world in which we live. And, uh, we kind of have to abide by its rules because it's it's the tool we got. Uh, so I'll come down here. I'll try to just erase some of this. I can take my brush out of soft light mode if I need to just make sure I go in and, you know, get in there and right click, make the brush a bit smaller and just make sure we really paint away, you know, an obvious, an obvious blemish in the edge of her arm. She is toned and defined, but she doesn't have little bulbous things sticking out of her arm. Whoops, I'm going to undo that. Make sure I'm still working on my mask there. And you can come down here. You can see the arm's not perfect. I'm not even going to take the time of day to clean it up. All right, let's go back to the brush tool. Uh, I have the brush tool selected. Let's go back to uh, soft light blend mode here on the brush tool. And painting with black, we can just really clean up the edge of her pants down here. You can see how that just really cleans up that haloing. And the same thing will happen here underneath the legs if we just paint that away. We probably could have gotten rid of this crease here that runs out of her crotch. But, you know, that would have been something we would have done over in the healing and cloning uh, side, cl cleaning up the blemishes in her photo. Let's get rid of this little area. So grab the brush tool once more. Let's knock it out of soft light blend mode, back to normal, right click. Let's make the brush very small and just go in there and paint that away. It's really no skin off our back. All right, great. And we can just continue moving up and looking over and just cleaning up the edges as we need. Now, I don't think I'm going to spend any more time on the edges because, you know, we've, we've spent enough time playing around with this at this point. Uh, let's get to talking about how we uh, change the light and the toning and everything to help this image match because it's kind of an important step of the process. So first thing I need to do is add a curves adjustment layer that just uh, kind of affects her. We need to reduce her brightness. She's far too bright for this scene. So I'm going to come up here, add a curves adjustment layer. Immediately we will just uh, clip it to her, command option or control alt and the letter G. And I think we're going to pull some contrast out of this. So we'll just pull the white point down. You want to be careful. If you pull the white point down too much, it'll really destroy the structure of highlights on her face and on her body. And that's a really great feature of her. The highlights really bring out, you know, the muscle and, and the toning that she has. So then we'll come over here and we'll just pull this down. We'll just really begin the darkening process here. Something like that. Maybe I'll we'll pull this down. She's a little too saturated as well, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, maybe what we'll also do is go to the reds. We'll boost the reds in, the, in her shadows. But what I don't want is over here, you can see the red. It's going to just dump a bunch of red into the highlight. So I'm going to add a point and just pull that back. It's really difficult to see the red line. But I added a point right there and just kind of pulled it back into lines. Just pull some of the red out of the highlights. Just really give a, a red bump to the shadow. And then I think I'll give the whole, uh, the whole instance of her a little kiss of green and maybe even push a little blue in as well. So I'm just adding a point to the very middle and pushing it up. There is before. There is after. 
And as you can see, it just helps bring her more into line with what we've got going on. I can go back to the composite RGB, or I'm sorry, the RGB mode here. And, you know, we can just, we can tweak and adjust maybe I'll, and make her just a little bit darker. So now I think what I'll do, I'll just close the, uh, the finished version of this file to free up a little memory here so we can really run at a little bit more optimum speed. Now I want to reduce contrast of the scene overall, not just attack her, not just attack the background. I want to add a, a curves adjustment layer here and you can see there's just a ton of dark pixels in this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up on the darkness and I'm going to pull down on the brighter areas. And you can see we're just killing off contrast. If I shut that layer off, there's before, there's after. We're really killing off a serious amount of contrast, something like that. That looks pretty, pretty much in line with what we want to do. That's pretty good. And now we'll go and we'll add a channel mixer adjustment layer. And here with channel mixer, I'm going to tick on monochrome. Now this is actually a really interesting way to work. When you're just working on getting the lighting correct, like the brightness, the exposure, if you will, of the subject and the background, sometimes temporarily converting your image to black and white, it takes away the distraction of color. And right now I can tell she probably really should be a little bit darker. So I'm going to just come in here. I'm going to make her a little bit darker. This is the curves, uh, the curves adjustment that is just targeting her. There we go, something like that. Maybe I'll push a little bit more snap into the very highlights just so we're maintaining our contrast levels. Something like that. I'm going to pull down on the darkness, maybe pull the shadow, the shadows over a little bit, but you can be, got to be careful. You can see down here on her pants. We don't want to lose all the detail. Something like that. That looks a little bit better. It looks more like she belongs in the scene. She still looks a little out of place, but we're going to work on correcting that. So here with Channel Mixer, we're going to set this to the blend mode now of Multiply. You're going to see this is really going to make a pretty drastic change. Uh, it actually looks kind of cool. She still looks a little out of place. Place. She's not quite right yet. We're going to set the opacity of this adjustment layer here to 50%. So there we go. And now we're going to add a photo filter. Now, part of the trick and part of what we've been doing is because this background was not necessarily shot with this model in mind and this model wasn't necessarily shot thinking like, oh, this is going to be a composite image. What we were doing when we were building the background was just kind of transforming our, the light and tone of the background so we could adjust it and force it to sort of work with our foreground subject, who in this case is this, is this fitness model. So what we're now doing is kind of we're changing the global color of both the background and foreground to force it to match. To get photorealistic composites is probably one of the most difficult things to do in Photoshop and it, it takes a lot of pre-production work. So when you're, when you're planning your shots, when it comes to actually shooting the photos and shooting the backgrounds, you need to really plan everything out and make sure you're getting your light and your color and your angles just spot on correct. Uh, but we're working here in a little bit more of a, a free-flowing, uh, creative world, if you will. So I added, just added this photo filter. I am going to work with the Warming Filter 85, and I'm going to crank the density up to 100%. You're going to see it's going to make a change here. We're going to make sure we leave Preserve Luminosity ticked on. This layer we're also going to set to the Blend Mode of Multiply. You're going to see it's going to give us this really, you know, like epic type of effect. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity here to 50 as well. So now we're really starting to pull this together. At this point, maybe the background is just a little bit too blurry, right? If we shut that off, you'll be able to see she actually, I think, almost blends with the image better if the background isn't nearly as blurry. So maybe I'll just shut the depth of field off. Or what might be better is if we go in and actually tweak all of those pins in the field blur that we created. I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. We're spending enough time talking about enough other stuff, but we could do that. I'm just going to shut it off for now and just work with an image that's going to be sharp through and through. All right, now that we've added that channel mixer and the photo filter, we're going to go ahead and begin uh, really kind of digitally repainting the way this image is lit as well. So I'm going to double click on my quick mask mode icon right over here, and I want to make sure color indicates is set to selected areas. All right, I'm going to hit OK. Once I'm sure of that, I'm going to grab my brush tool. I want to make sure that I am in quick mask mode. So your button should look active like that. We can right click. We want just a huge soft edged brush, maybe even bigger than this. I'll go with like a thousand pixels, right? And I'm going to just paint here across the bottom of my photo, something kind of like this. We're going to really darken up the foreground of the photo. Now I know you might be thinking, hey, but wait, we added that, that gradient before where we brighten the foreground. Yes, we did. That's really just affecting the background. We want to affect both the background and her at the same time uh, to create kind of this shadow we affect at the bottom of our frame. Hit the letter Q. It's going to load your painted area as a selection. Then we'll go select modify feather and we'll feather this by like 400 pixels, something ridiculous. And then we'll come up here and we'll apply a levels adjustment layer. So I'm going to go levels. And all I want to do here is drag the black point over. We're going to darken up that foreground. Eh, it's maybe a little bit too much. And we'll also gra grab the center point here and drag it a little bit toward the white. That's going to just flood the foreground with a little bit more darkness. 
and it's just going to kind of give us a nice shadowy effect here in the foreground. And maybe what I'll do is add, I'll add a second shadow effect here. So I'm going to enter back into quick mask mode. I just hit that little icon and we're going to come in here and we're going to paint an even smaller, uh, more concentrated little fade here onto the front of our frame. Just like that, hit the letter Q. Mm, yeah, we should probably still feather this a little bit. Let's go like select modify feather. We'll only feather this like 55 pixels or something. Hit OK. And we're going to add another levels adjustment layer. And this one we're just going to add an additional bit of darkening just, you know, like right there at the very edge of the photo. So if I shut the two levels off, there's what we have. When we turn the levels on, you can just see how it's kind of helping blend everything together. Let's enter into quick mask mode one more time. And this time I'm going to paint up here kind of where highlight should be. All right, so this should be kind of a highlighty, you know, brighter area of the photo. Hit the letter Q to load that as a selection. We're going to go select. We're going to go modify feather. And we're going to feather this bad boy again by about 400 pixels. And uh, I'm going to add another levels adjustment layer. And in this case, I'm going to just brighten this area. So I'm going to brighten it a little bit. I'm going to spike the highlights a little bit, something like that. And maybe I'll even just bring the shadows up a little bit just to intensify the contrast. But I really don't want to take away from that brightening. We want to bring some of that attention back up to her face, back up to the brighter area of the photo. There's before, there's after. You can see the kind of difference it makes. So without any of that levels lighting adjustment, that's what we had. And there's what we have now. So we really begin to flip the script on the way the whole photo is going to be lit. Cool. Let's add a color balance adjustment layer here. So color balance. And I think here I'm going to begin with the shadows. So let's jump into the shadows because the shadows are going to be kind of volatile. You see if I add a lot of blues to the shadow, see how dark the photo gets like very, very quickly. By the way, I also have preserve luminosity checked on. Uh, we're going to just set this to like a negative 10 here. Whoop, not plus negative 10. I'm going to go negative 10. Uh, you know what? Actually, I probably want to put blues in my shadows. Let's begin here with cyan. Let's add some cyan to the shadows. I'm going to bring this bottom slider back over. Yeah, about negative 10 in the cyan department. That looks good. Maybe we'll drag just, just a hair of magenta into the shadows. And I think I'll add just a couple clicks of blue just because I really don't want to change. I don't want to darken the image that much. Let's come over here to midtones. And with midtones, I'm going to push some reds into the midtones. I am watching just the skin tone. You see how red it's getting? We can correct that in a moment if it gets kind of out of hand. I'm going to push some green in. This is actually going to help combat some of that red and pink in the skin. Uh, and then down here, we're probably going to push some blue into the midtones as well just to try to keep things level and looking you know relatively natural and I use that term very loosely in this case all right let's go over to the highlights and here with highlights we're going to push some red into the highlights again just watch the skin you don't want to go too crazy on the skin we're going to push some green up into the highlights something like plus 10 looks good and I think we should push some yellow into the highlights that yellow in the highlights will pair nicely with the orange filteriness that we have with our photo filter down there so there's before color balance there's after color balance you can see how it's just really helping blend the entire image together much better. Let's also add a black-white adjustment layer here. And what I want to do with black-white is we want to set this to the blend mode of soft light. This is going to infuse some crazy contrast, way too much. But one of the cool things we can do is play with these sliders. We can say like, you know, hey, maybe we want to darken the skin, you know, here in the foreground and make that a little darker. Maybe we want to brighten it and really emphasize the contrast. What happens if we pull up on yellows? Yeah, that looks pretty good too. And you can play with these sliders a little bit, see what you get. And I think think we should really knock the opacity of this down. So I'm going to click on the word opacity and drag it over until it looks about right. Maybe like 40% opacity. There's before, there's after. You see how it just infuses more uh, contrast right back into the image. Looks pretty stinking good. All right. We have two last layers to add here, a dodge and burn layer and a grain layer. So let's do this. Now is, remember way back when, when I hold, held down alt and I click to add a new layer, we want to go ahead and uh, set this layer to the blend mode of soft light. In fact, I'm going to name this layer D and B. I'm just thinking, I might have cut that part of the tutorial out at this point, so I'm not sure if it's even still there. But if so, I made a mistake earlier in the tutorial that I may or may not have cut out in uh, the editing process. All right, now when we set this to the soft light blend mode, Photoshop's going to say, hey, look, fill with soft light neutral color, AKA 50% gray, to which I will answer, please. And it's going to add that. And you can see I've got D and B set to soft light, but it doesn't look like we added anything because neutral gray does not show up when you set the layer to soft light. Hit Command or Control J to duplicate the dodge and burn layer and just name this layer grain. We'll get to that in a second. Let's just shut that layer off. Let's come back down to D and B. And we're going to grab the dodge tool, all right? I have it set to an exposure of about 20%. That's usually where I hang out with the dodge tool. And we can go in and just accentuate highlights or shadows as we see fit with this tool just to really set things off. So we could come in here on the side of her face and hit the highlight there on her forehead. Right here on the side of her nose, just use the bracket key there to make the brush bigger, bigger or smaller. You really just want to ride the highlights 
uh, of the photo. You can hold down your alter option key and, you, and that will temporarily switch it to the burn tool. So now we're just burning in like the edge of her hair there. Get that shadow on her ear. Get the shadow coming down the side of her neck here on the front of her neck. Make the brush tool a little bit bigger. Now I'm back to, I let go of the alt key. So I'm back to just brightening things up, you know, boost up her chest here a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit these highlights here on the sides of her arms. Right, that looks great. Get the highlight right back there. Bring out the highlight on her fingers and on, you know, right there on her forearm. And then even here uh, around the, the front side of her, her tank, that looks pretty good. And we can make sure we get her, you know, her shoulders and her delts and just the forearm there and clean things up as we see fit. And you, know, you can go in and add shadow wherever you think shadow needs to be added here to the shirt, uh, you know, around the fingers. Anywhere really is going to work. We can back this off. Well, I don't want to back off too much because I want you guys to see the difference here. Shut off dodge and burn. Turn it back on. And you can see it's subtle, but it really can do a lot in terms of setting an image off and helping to complete uh, a look. Now, I think the last thing we want to do here is apply some grain. So let's turn the grain layer on and select it. And then we're going to go filter, camera raw filter. And camera raw has some great grain functionality here. If we come under the FX tab here, or effects as the tool tip is uh, so kindly letting me know. Uh, boost the amount of grain up around 60. Maybe we'll boost the size as well. Bring it up to... 40-ish, eh, and a roughness of 50 is perfect. Hit OK, and you'll see, if we zoom in here, the grain has been added to the photo uh, because only the grain is showing on this layer and not the grayness, right? If I shut the grain off, look at that. There's before, there's after. So the grain really just helps pull everything together. Now, if you're looking at the finished composite and you're not 100% happy with it, part of the beauty of this is we could grab her. We could still move her around. You want to make sure that you move the dodge and burn layer with her. So just command or control click dodge and burn layer. Grab your move tool and we can shift her around a little bit. So maybe bump her over just a little bit and that looks good. Uh, if we wanted, we could apply a, a an additional curves adjustment. So we could go like curves and we could say, you know what, there's still too much magenta in her skin. So I could go to the green channel because magenta is the opposite of green. I could grab the little finger scrubby, scrubby tool and I could just pull down on her skin. Well, pulling down her skin is going to introduce more magenta. It actually doesn't look too bad though. If I push up on her skin, it's going to introduce more green. I actually kind of like the more magenta. I kind of dig that. Uh, we go back to RGB here and we could say, you know what, brighten up that central part of the photo a little bit more, clean things out. And maybe if we don't like how much yellow there is, we could pull down Pull, uh, push up on the blue and that'll infuse a little bit more blue into there but maybe we want to pull some yellow into the shadows so we could do something like that maybe it would come over here there we go whoop that's too much that's too much something kind of like that looks pretty good and you can just you know you can toy with it a little bit you know take some of the red out of the shadows if you think or maybe push a little bit more red into the foreground actually no we probably want to pull some red out of the foreground something like that that looks pretty good all right, and then you can see like there's before curves, there's after curves. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Or maybe it's something right down the middle. Reduce the opacity a little bit. That's the beauty of using these adjustment layers. So about 50% opacity. That looks pretty cool. And uh, that'll pretty well, you know, I think, I think we're looking good here. So I'm just going to zoom this, get rid of the extra panels, bring it to full screen, and we can really check out our handiwork. So that'll pretty much wrap it up for this one. I hope you guys really did enjoy it and you picked up a thing or two. If you do use these files or any of your own files and you create an image like this or a composite image at all, I would love to see it. Upload it to Instagram. Tag me on Instagram. My name is at tutvid. I'll have a little uh, tool tip or, or you know, lower third or something appear here on the video to, to show you the Instagram name, at tutvid. Just tag me in it. I don't need some crazy elaborate shout out. I just love to see what's going on uh, when you guys create this stuff and follow the tutorials. It's super cool. So for creating creating this composite effect in Photoshop and using smart objects and masks and select a mask and like a bajillion different adjustment layers and just free transforming and everything along the way. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.